Hey guys, so I wanted to go through a how to draw a bear. So we're going to use some of the skills we've used before on thinking about simple shapes. So you can see here on my bear, if you look closely, what letter does that look like? It could be a C or an upside down U. We're going to see that simple rectangle shape. There's that U again. Then we can see another U, an O and an O. There's a little V. This looks kind of like an upside down T and since he's smiling, it curves a little. We're gonna think about our snowflakes, X and T. And we're gonna think about some more rectangles for the shape of his scarf. Then we're really gonna focus on patterns. What kind of patterns can we add to his scarf? I'm gonna have a snowflake repeating pattern in the background. And then I could think if there's any sort of color I wanna use in pattern. Now, each time I do it, it can look a little different. Here my U is a little flatter, more like a U than a C, less curvy on the sides. And I made the mouth a little different. I know it's a little hard to see here, but I wanna go through the steps with you and I wanna remind you that it can look a little different each time you make it. Okay, so let's go. So let's think about how big we want it. This is gonna be close up. So a lot of times when we work, we tend to work very small. And what we have to do is we have to learn how to fill our page a little bit more. And so here, it's kind of a portrait of a bear. We can't see his whole body. We see kind of from his chest up. So I'm gonna go through those steps for you. And we are going to make our very own bear. So think about, we wanna have room for his part of his body. So I'm gonna start with this sort of C. It's a little bit curvier, and I'm gonna start it right about here. And I'm starting in a Sharpie because I kind of wanna make sure you can see it better. And notice, not perfect, but perfectly fine for me. Now, instead of making it closed like a circle or an oval, I'm gonna make it just a little bit flatter here. So you can see it's not as curvy, it's just a little bit flatter. Now we know it's round, so that's why it curves a tiny bit. And so I'm gonna turn this into a rectangle, I'm gonna draw my lines down, and then I'm gonna keep this just a little bit curvy, like that. It's kind of like the beginning of other things too. That could be the beginning of a light bulb, uh, the beginning of a snowman with a scarf, the beginning of even a snow globe. So I'm going to make his, um, I'm just gonna show you how we use just these very simple lines. Right now he looks a little skinny, but then I'm gonna add his arms like this here. And then because you're working in pencil, we're gonna make that tummy right here, but I'm gonna first do my scarf. So I'm gonna make a rectangle here and a rectangle here. So it looks like his scarf is on there keeping him warm. Now's where you can go in and you can think about the pattern of, of your scarf. And you can do it in whatever order you want. Now, because this is kind of turned sideways, I'm gonna curve my lines here. Or say Mrs. Maestri, you have to finish him. So let's look at that upside down U again. There it is. And that's gonna be his muzzle. And then I'm gonna think about that V. Now I don't need to make it pointy. I can make it a little curvy. I could draw it all the way down or I could stop about here because he's happy and smiling. Remember I said that's like an upside down T? And then his eyes, I could just do them tiny like this if I wanted, but I want him to be wide open. So I'm gonna make his eyes a circle, fill it in and another circle around it. Now, I don't want it to look like a rabbit, although it could be. I'm gonna make his ears rounded. And then the fluffy part inside. I'm gonna repeat that shape. There's that C again, a little more curvy than a U. C again. And I'm gonna fill in the nose. I might leave it a little shiny mark to make it look like his nose is shining. Oh, my Sharpie's running out, so I have to go a little bit slower to get it to work. Now you don't need to use a Sharpie, but you can. 
Now you could also decide you want to give your bear texture. This guy is very flat, but if I wanted to give him texture, I could go make this sort of endless W pattern. You see how I'm making him a little fluffier? It's giving texture to his fur. And a zigzag back and forth really closely. And I could do that all around. I kind of like him to look furry. Zigzag all around. I might even do it around his ears. Zigzag all around. Fluffy fur for the winter. Keep him warm. So you can see how I did it a little different this time, right? And I made his eyes a little smaller. I made his fluffy fur. I'm gonna go all the way around, giving him some texture. There we go. Oops, I forgot his little tummy. And it's gonna look like it's tucked underneath the scarf and finishes right there. I could add texture to his muzzle if I wanted to, because he's a furry, furry bear. There we go. And any other details I want, but I'm gonna concentrate on making those snowflakes. What letter is that? It's an X, and I'm gonna put a T through it. There we go, that could be a star too, or a firework. Now I could make it an uppercase T, each of those lines. Now it looks a little bit more like a snowflake. I could make another one here. You don't even need to always make that many sides. Maybe this time it's a lowercase T, like that. And maybe this time over here, I'm gonna put little O's at the end. You could also have some fun adding some of them together. Let's say I go like this. And you can make them different sizes and look like they're further away. You'd make them smaller. And this time I'm gonna add little O's in here. So you could have a lot of fun making all different kinds of snowflakes. I could make a tiny one looking like it's falling in the background that we can't even see any of the details on it. The snowflakes look so different. You see how it looks further away? Different sizes. I could even make a giant one right here. Whoa, pretty big. Maybe I'll put the uppercase and the lowercase T together. So I'll put it at the edge and I'm putting one inside like this. Now I have to think about what color would I like my bear and what color I would like the background. So I'm thinking that for the background, I probably would like to use cool colors. So if I were using cool colors, I could use purples, green, greens, and blues, or a combination of them. Or if I wanted it to look warm, which would be kind of unusual if there's snow falling, I could use yellow, orange, and red. Now you can do lots of different things. I like sometimes to make it look like the wind is blowing, so I like to make lots of swirls in the sky. I like to swirl it, swirl it, and I try not to go on top of my bear when I'm swirling. And this is a good chance also to do an oil pastel resist. If you don't have oil pastels, it also works with crayon. Now you can overlap your swirls if you want. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Okay. Oops, where's my cup? Okay, find my cup. Let me see if I have, oh, there's my cup. Okay. So I could do color mixing. I could use any of my cool colors. I could use any of my warm colors. Now for my bear, I'm thinking more along the lines of earth tones. And the earth tones might be like, yellows and browns, a little bit of red in there as well, and orange. So for this, I'm gonna try some of my cool colors for my background. So I'll start with my blue. Blue skies on a cool day. And you see how my swirls are showing? Can you see that? Look at that, how it shows up. It looks like a windy day. I can add some more, and when, remember when I'm brushing, I use the flat part of the brush if I have a flat brush. And I always try to keep it up on its toes. I'm never scrubbing. I'm always pulling my bristles. Look at how beautiful that looks. Now you could just color it with crayon, markers, colored pencils, whatever you have available. If you don't have that, I could mix colors. I could go over and get some purple. 
I rinsed my brush and look at how it looks when we blend it together. Some people call that like a galaxy color because it's wet. Do you see how they blend together? I see it's wet here. I could add a little purple and it kind of blends it so beautifully. And basically that, oh, look at that. I love when that happens, don't you? So I'm gonna continue with color and then probably what I'll do is I will make my bear some shade of brown, some shade of brown. And sometimes what I like to do is I like to put a little layer of brown and then go back and use my oil pastels or my crayons right on top of it. I'm gonna go in and add a little layer of brown, unless yours is a polar bear. I'm gonna go around, don't want the eye to be the same color. Add my brown. See how when I have less water on my brush, it comes out a little darker? So for now, I'm just making it a light color brown. There we go. Okay. Oops. It's okay if you make mistakes. Look at how my water dripped there. That's all right. I'm gonna make my browns here. And I can go back later and add whatever color I want to the inner part of his ear. I might do that with crayon or oil pastel. And there we go. That's the start of my bear. I can't wait to see yours. And remember, it doesn't need to look exactly like mine. Look at my other one I made. So different. Still a bear out in the snow. Perfect.